hello 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 welcome back to another glorious episode of the tents and tabernacles podcast where we meet god through the person of jesus christ yay yay Yay. it is the week of christmas yes it is does it feel like it i'm not sure no it does not yeah i feel like it's not gonna feel like the week of christmas until the day after christmas I just feel like I'm in this space where I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Like I'm like, it, even like at work, I worked yesterday and today, but it's like I barely worked. And then I had vacation. And then it's like, I know Christmas is coming. Like I have Christmas pajamas and everything. Mm-hmm, but same. I did not go gro- grocery shopping. I did not go Christmas shopping yet. I'm doing that tomorrow. I'm finishing Literally my Christmas tomorrow. gifts this week. I'm like, I'm on a I'm gonna I'm on a good roll. I'm almost done. Yeah. This is what happens when you hand make all your Christmas gifts. Mm, yeah, see, I'm the just week gonna, of Christmas. I'm just gonna go and ask the Lord to lead me. Like, hey, what is gonna be good for this person? Because we're getting everything in this store. This yep. Mm-hmm. Where are you yeah. going? Target. No Nordstrom Rack. Even better. Mm-hmm. That's where I usually do a lot of my grocery. Sh- uh, grocery. I honestly keep saying grocery. <laughs> you need to go grocery shopping. <laughs> I do need to go grocery shopping. Actually, oh my god. Oh yeah, that's yeah, probably going to be tomorrow. Good. I have a lot to get done tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, all the Christmas gifts are still at the store. But it's going to happen. It's happening. Um, it has to happen. Um, yeah. So episode fourteen. Yes. We are uh, still today going to be talking about our good friend David. David, yes, David. We're talking about David. I think mo- I think just about David. I don't think any other characters really come to play except um, Nathan the prophet and I Michael, think. his wife, and Michael, his ex-wife. I don't think she was his wife at the time that that it or was she? I don't know. It there. I thought stories. she took. I it's thought he took her as, as his wife before he became king. Yeah, but I thought, after her husband had died. Oh, he took her back. He had a heart attack. Yeah. And then oh. and then he was like, Bet, you come up with me, sis. I mean, who who can keep up? David had a lot of wives. Yeah. And it actually said all of yeah, all of <laughs> all of those that he had married and had kids with outside of Jerusalem, and then all the ones that he married and had kids with inside Jerusalem. Yeah. And yet he still had time. To catch Bathsheba while she was showering, and I I don't understand how he had all that time. This is the thing you want you wonder how he had time for that, but think about this: David was at war most of his like life before he turned thirty, and or even before he like settled his palace, and he was still marrying and having children at war. So he that is true. So now that he has a time to sit out somewhere. Yeah, I'm gonna see Bathsheba. If she looks, come get her. I need her. Bring her. <laughs> <laughs> Where you get that? Is that on Amazon? <laughs> I don't want that one. I want that one. Um, before we get started, can you pray us in? Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for everything that you have planned for us for this week and this podcast episode. Father, I ask that you just speak through us and say whatever it is that you need to say um, through us. And we are your willing vessels in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, Amen. For sure. For sure. Um, Okay. So where should we start? I think the beginning of my notes is David... Moving the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. So I got mad confused as we were reading. This is probably the hardest section Mm. in the the Bible plan. Because it jumps from Samuel's, the Samuel's to the Chronicles to Mm -hmm. Psalms. And then like I end up getting not bored with the Psalms, but I'm just like, okay, we'll get back to the story. Yeah. Um, (laughs) it's like it's like the psalms are the commercials and i'm like okay yeah. like can i fast forward the commercials and yeah. skip ad on youtube to get back to the story because the yeah. video that i was watching y'all left me on a cliffhanger and now i gotta know what's happening next yeah because now it's, it's making me samuel and chronicles kind of go slower because i'm we're only getting like two chapters of that and they were going into the psalms but the yeah. psalms is good too because it's like it's 
it's from that same time, so it has to be there. But I, I get what you're saying. It is kind of like the like. There's some days we only have psalms, and I'm just like, yeah. And I'm right. like, I be skimming them <laughs> real hard because I'm like, okay, cool. But like, where do we leave David? And like, I feel like this is you know Thursday night, Shondaland, and I gotta wait a whole week to get yeah. back to the story. And I'm just like. Yeah. This is why I just binge watch stuff. I don't mm. do commercials. Yeah, I didn't think about that part when we would read it chronologically. Because for a while, we were reading whole books at a time. So it, yeah. didn't, it didn't really, you know, throw me off. But now we it's were like, binging oh, the we're, Bible. we're literally like, I mean, they had a few things out of place. Like Job was a little further ahead than mm -hmm. it is in the Bible. But the whole but story now, together. Yeah, now we're like going to different books. But it is showing me that because i think i guess i just forgot um that second samuel and first chronicles are are literally the same story just told by different people and two different people different audiences uh but still like historical accounts of what happened yeah i had no idea mm -hmm. and i was like um i think someone brought this up in the like when we talk at the end mm -hmm. um, i was like me too, girl. I thought that the Bible app was just glitching because my Bible app been glitching lately. And so I was like, I know I just read this. Yeah. But, when but it'll be it a through, few more like, sentences. It'll be like a few more details yeah. that weren't there before. And I'm like, wait, hold on, Becca. Did I miss that the first time? It's like, no, this is an entirely different book mm -hmm. and chapter. And yeah, but you don't really pay attention, or at least I didn't really pay attention to the book and chapter, like, because I'll just keep hitting next, like, while I'm reading. Oh, yeah, so you're just reading. Yeah. And so I'm like, wait, what? What mm. book am I in? Because yeah. I thought I just read this in the other book from the other yeah. place. Yeah, it was crazy if you if you did read it just in the order um, that the Bible's in, there's a there's two books between I want to say it's Sam, Second Samuel, then First Kings, and Second Kings, Kings, Second Kings, yeah, and then, and then it goes Kings. in the Chronicles. But the stuff that happens in Kings, it happens after that stuff. So it's like when you go back into the Chronicles, I can see if you were reading it like that, how you could be confused. Like, wait, yeah. what's happening here? Yeah. So yeah, it does put a little it into perspective a little bit, <clears throat> but. Um, we're going to start with David. You know, finally, they're like not at war and stuff. I think we kind of touched on that last time. Yeah. And they want to move the Ark of the Covenant to, I want to say they're trying to move it to Jerusalem, right? Mm hmm. But the first time they move it, it was not good. It was not, it was not good, especially for one guy, but. It was not good. So the, the I realized this time that the problem with them moving it, it was it was no reverence really involved. It's just like we're I moving this. and we're just picking it up. And so he had I wrote this down. He had thirty thousand of his like fit young men, um, and he used soldiers basically to move the ark. Not Levites. Nobody consecrated themselves. Mm -hmm. They basically just picked that thing up and. You know, they may have been holding it by the poles at first, I think, but they didn't know the rules of the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, basically. and then the the cattle or the oxen or whatever stumbled, and and that's when dude was like, oh, wait, got to catch it, and then he no, dropped it. No, no, yeah. What's his name? Uzzah? 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 Yeah, Uzzah. I don't know. One of those, but he reached out to try to catch the Ark of the Covenant. He thought he was doing the right thing. Yeah, I think I don't think he he wasn't trying. I to think he would have died either way because if his side hit the ground, I feel like he he would have died anyway. It was just instant judgment. I feel like anyway, if if his side would have hit the ground, I always thought it was that he reached <clears throat> out and touched it. I always wondered if they just let it fall on the ground, who picks it up? <laughs> like, how do we do that? Yeah, like what are the protocols for if this thing falls? Because it wasn't his fault that the cattle fell unless the cattle fell because they were just doing everything so wrong that the cattle was almost trembling and stumbling or I don't know. So like when I went when well okay in one of the accounts because I know it talked about it in like I think it was in the in second Samuel it gave the account but when it gave it again in first chronicles it had said that um well 
David had said this the second time that they moved it when he was like, okay, I didn't do this right the first time. I didn't mm-hmm. even consult God on how to do this the first time. So, yeah. so we're going to do this right this time. Um, Cause I, I mean, I'd always known that like the first time he didn't really consult God. Cause it would have said that just mm-hmm. like, like, I think like a chapter before it was the battle. Well, one of the battles with the Philistines and um, David was like, God, should I pursue them? And God was like, yeah, go ahead. And then he, you know, did what he had to do and won the battle and then the second time when they came to the camp and he was like should i he consulted god again and god was like no don't pursue them go the back way because i have already gone through and won the battle for you so it's like he consulted god in everything and this is this is something that he didn't consult god in at all and i feel like because he hadn't consulted God, the grace to carry it wasn't there. And so the mm. oxen actually felt the weight of what was going on. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like moving the Ark of the covenant would be supernatural. I don't feel like it would just be like, man could just carry it from one place to another. Cause that would mean that, that before that would mean that before <laughs> Jesus, like Jesus's death and resurrection, mere men could just carry the presence of god yeah so like god's grace would have to be there for for men to carry the presence of god to somewhere else like the presence of god is on the inside of us now like the spirit of god is on the inside of us now because of grace because of jesus so they didn't have that and so i feel like the oxen was like this heavy yeah Cause either way, I feel like something would be bad will happen to you. Cause think about remember when those when the was it the Philistines or it, no somebody stole the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, they, were, they I don't know how they were getting it around, but they didn't die instantly. But some of them started dying. A yeah, lot of them started dying. yeah, they had yeah there was judgment in their camp for sure. So it was just this one seems like it was so like he was just zapped like dead like. And I felt bad. Be- Not I felt bad, but David got angry. Like, yeah, because he was he like, God, bro, chill. What the heck? Yeah, he had one of those moments where you're like, you know, people like to admit it, but you're like mad at God. And you're just like, bro, like, you can't, like, there's no explanation for my friend dying. I'm asking you, and I don't like your answer. Like, I'm just going to leave the Ark of the Covenant here. I'm, I, I got to go. I got to yeah, just drop it off at Obed Edom's house. <laughs> I gotta yeah, take a break. Cause I'm about, I'm I'm upset. That's how I saw it. Like I need a break. <laughs> I'm not doing this right. You killing people. He said, if you don't love me, then don't talk to me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was like, Dave, like Dave was like, Are you serious? Like, what were the exact words? I was laughing. I was like, oh my God. But um yeah. I, I wrote that David was mad and scared. Of yeah, day. he just left it. Yeah, he's like, I, because he literally said, "I don't know how I'm gonna get this to." Jerusalem. Yeah, he was so, like, "If, if this uh, gonna happen, like we're not gonna make it." Because you go, know, he's gonna leave it here. They were trying to have a good time because David was dancing before the ark, or at this, this the first time too. Like they were all like dancing and playing instruments. Yeah. But they're like, "Oh, it's gonna go to like the holy city." Yeah, but then it got real sad really quick, and they were like, "Never mind." But then when they move it the second time, oh, it was realized, what like two months, uh, like two three months. I let thought. Me see if I can find the, was the exact for a while. time. But he was like, "Look, um, I, I just, I tell you, he just needed a break. He was scared. He's he like, was abort, like, I am abort, not abort. touching that thing again." Not me. Not, yeah, not I. Um, 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 um yeah, three months. The the Ark of the Lord remained in Obed Edom's house for three months and it blessed his whole family. So once David saw, okay, well they didn't die. Right. I'm gonna go get the Ark now. I'm it's safe, I think. Yeah. It's safer. <laughs> I think it's safer. And this time I'm gonna do it right. Yeah. I'm gonna have the Levites carry it. And I'm going to have them consecrate themselves. And mm-hmm. every time they take six steps, I'm going sac- to do some sacrifices. Every six I'm gonna do, steps? I'm going to do everything. And you know, when I read that, I said, now how long did it take them to get to Jerusalem? Because every six steps, 
you're sacrificing like a bull. And I don't And also, that, how'd y'all carry all these sacrifices? I'm trying to figure out. Like, isn't doesn't the sacrifice take a little time? Like, you have to slaughter it, you have to burn it. So I thought every, it was just after the first six steps, he did that and then they walked it on home. I thought it was every six. I, let me read it again. I, I might have read it wrong. Where was this at? <laughs> okay, hold on. Because I was like, you know, that. That's not I couldn't read it. I, I couldn't <laughs> read it wrong. All it says, it says, so when those carrying the ark of the Lord advanced six steps, he sacrificed an ox and a fattened calf. Now, I could have, I, I could have just assumed that they were doing it every six steps because it doesn't say. But what is the significance of six steps and then sacrificing the animal? Well, six is like. A human number, what like the number of humanity. Mm. So it's like I'm gonna walk six, six steps six to the end of myself mm. and make a sacrifice, and then we gonna walk the rest of the way. Mm. Hmm. I don't know, but I thought that in my head, that's why I was picturing them going six steps, slaughtering the bull. <laughs> <another six steps. laughs> what if they like oh forgot God. to count? <laughs> I know, it's like, oh, we gotta go back. We gotta yeah, do it gotta again. Go oh, I'm trying to go to the enduring word real quick and see if it gives any insight to that at all. And like the second time, our boy David was in some in a linen cloak. Yeah, whatever, he had with he the was, he was on. In, he was in his night clothes. He, <laughs> he looked, this is this is Christmas season. He looked like um. Like Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah, I, I was trying to. I need to Google All he needed a Latin was a nightcap. E- e- f- e- f- odd. F- odd. Is that how e- you e- say f- it? E- f- isn't that the um? That's what they wear, isn't it? Isn't it what the that's what the Levites wear? It's like a little. Is, a little is that like a prayer cloth looking thing? I think. I think it's like the little. I don't know which part of the priestly garment like that a is. Little um, like a little tunic, I think. Oh, the ephod is the tunic? I think so. Let's I think it's like the little part. I'm looking at it online. But I think he only had that on. Oh, <laughs> it's a sleeveless that garment. Part on. I'm not sure, though. He was I'm out here with sure. his shoulders bare. He was just I don't bare know, shoulders. Because I feel like, why was she so concerned about how he was looking and like she felt like he was being inappropriate and he wasn't the only one in a linen ephod either because it was him and like a couple other people yeah in the samuel account it says that david was dancing with all his might before the lord wearing a linen ephod he and the whole house of the of israel were bringing up the ark of the lord with shouts and the sound of the ram's horn what does the chronicles one say David and all Israel. So in Chronicles, it says David and all Israel were dancing with all their might. I feel like in Samuel, it says that David was dancing with all his might, and Israel was. We, we were all like it doesn't specify that everybody was dancing. In Chronicles, it's like we were all dancing before our like the Lord with all of our mm-hmm. like their might, not just um, not just David's. I thought that this was the part. I thought that this was. Setting up David being naked and dancing before the Lord. Was he naked? There was a. There's another oh, wait, account actually, where David danced naked. Actually, that part that I just read was the first time they brought the ark because uh, after that, our our boy Uzzah dies. I'm trying to see when they go the second time. See, Chronicles gives a lot more of a lengthy explanation. It got yeah. people's names. It's telling me all sorts of stuff, like about a bunch. I'm just like, wait, is what is going on? It's a it's a lot longer of a story. It expands yeah. like one chapter into three. Yeah. I'm trying to find where he danced again. In Chronicles, it says that he was dressed in a robe of fine linen. Mm. So it's a different description. Maybe it was 
then? Maybe he maybe it was then. Maybe you you could see. Maybe you could you see, see stuff. He you was sure? doing it. I mean, because he was dancing, it was like lifting up. Maybe I don't know. Michael was upset. saying something about him dishonor himself in front of the girls. There yeah. was like the girls there, and so maybe he was exposing himself, or you know. But she really just didn't like him. That's really what um, it was. Yeah, that's why she ended up being barren. I think that was barren by choice. I don't know. I thought it said that the Lord closed her up in her womb. Oh, I just because I had read. I'm okay. I read in the ESV and it said um, that she didn't bear any children until the day she died. Yeah, I don't know, or maybe I got that from that uh that devotional, maybe. that video devotional that it was like that was like the end of Saul's line. That was mm. it. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't because Mephibosheth continued oh, yeah. that line. So they tried to snuff it out as much as they could. Maybe, but I think Michael. I think she was just like David. Whatever. Um, she was just mad at him. Way, whatever. You just so happy all the time, <laughs> and and she was just like, I ain't trying to be with you. I ain't trying to sleep with you. I'm just she, here, and then she died. That, she had that bad spirit like her daddy, just hateful, jealous, judgment. I mean, when you're miserable, if somebody else is happy and dancing around, it, it's definitely trash for you. Right. And he got on a little linen cloth. You're like, okay, I'm going to find something to hate on here. Basically. Trust me. I was like, is she mad that like he ain't ever danced in a linen cloth for her? I was she thinking like every. Something. I was like, how, why is she mad at this? I really thought that this was when he was dancing naked because everyone talks about David dancing naked. And I've always heard it attached to the verse that like we hear uh, that that's in like these passages. This it is, must I be get this a lot more, what like, I get more undignified than this. I, it has to be this part because what other time did he get naked and dance? Okay, Let I'm going to I'm going to attempt to Google this and I hope. Oh, my goodness. I hope. David dancing. And during where where am I at? Am I in Chronicles or Samuel? It says David was wearing a linen effort. It is a mistake to think that David was immodest. <laughs> First Chronicles 15 27 indicates that David was dressed just like all the other priests and Levites in this procession. So maybe she was mad he was dressed like a priest? Oh my goodness. What? Um. Wow, I feel like I've been lied to. About what? About David being naked? Yes. I was about to say, I don't know who was like, I've that. heard it from pulpits in like in correlation with You like, know, I think I have heard that too, but like, see, this is why we are reading it for ourselves because maybe if you just read Second Samuel, you'll say, "Ooh, he was kind of low key naked. He he just had a little that you know, like you can, or rather, he must have been naked because yeah, you can you know, make him surmise that. that but this. if you read like this is if you read Chronicles, it indicates that he's dressed like all the other priests, unless all of them are naked. Now you know, it, which we don't think of that at all. I'm like, then what happened to the linen ephod? Like, I could okay, I would imagine that what happened is that since this is an ephod, this is a tunic that mm-hmm. doesn't have like pants. There's no right. pants. It's just fine linen draped on your body, basically sleeveless mm-hmm. draped on your body. That if you're dancing with all your might, some stuff may slip. But everybody was dancing with all their might. Exactly. Though. But it's like everybody ain't her husband. She was just being a hater, a hateration in this dancery. But yeah, that's crazy. I have <laughs> like I've literally been taught from the pulpit naked. that David would dance, that David danced mm-hmm. naked before the Lord. Or rather danced his I don't even know why they would want people to think that though, if that's not biblical. I have that no is idea. so weird. I don't know what translation they're reading. Listen, listen to this. <laughs> this this says, and this might be why I guess she's feeling like you you supposed to be the king and you looking normal mm-hmm. out here. 
So it says, from our knowledge of ancient and modern culture, we can surmise that David's dance wasn't a solo performance. He probably danced with simple rhythmic steps together with other men in the way one might see Orthodox Jewish men today dance. In this context, David's linen ephod means he set aside his royal robes and dressed just like everyone else in the procession. Oh. We might also no, point out that. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. We might also point out that David's dancing was appropriate in the context. This was a parade with a marching band, a grand procession. David's dancing fit right in. If David did this as the nation gathered on the Day of Atonement, it would be out of context and wrong. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> of course it would. <laughs> like what? But yeah, so that makes it a little more sense. It's like she was looking like you're just honoring yourself because look at you're supposed to be the king and you looking wow. mad regular out here looking like the priest gotcha. and you ain't the priest. Yeah. Like Jesus. Yeah. Um but I don't know why people would want us to be think he's naked. Like what what I don't know how what, I don't even know what, what part is of that the verse they brought that up okay and like what is the message when you're like look at david he was out there naked dancing like what is the message in the sermon it's <laughs> the extent that you're willing to look foolish oh. like in worshiping and praising god so like it's always paired with the like the verse that says oh if you basically david was like if you think this is bad i can get a lot more undignified than this wow and so, like, there's a whole song wow, just for that verse. And I've heard it so often in the charismatic church. And, like, yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And, yes, I do know that when the Holy Spirit breaks out in churches, it can get crazy. But yeah. when you're taught that every Sunday you need to be looking undignified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to be flailing your arms, jumping around like a crazy person. Uh-huh. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's confusing. Right. And I mean, it does say that David was dancing with all his might, but like the commentary said, he could have just been like stomping. Like, you know, he probably just been really into it, but he might not have been yeah. gyrating. Like, and go- yeah, like dude was out. stomping the yard and y'all over here saying that he was naked. <laughs> yeah. Oh Come my on, gosh. y'all. Read your Bibles. Don't put nothing in there that it ain't in there. Oh my goodness. I'm still trying to figure out what the what the sermon is with that in it. Like what is what is the message? <laughs> But I'm glad that yeah. we fleshed that out. Because yeah. literally, as I was reading, I was like, "Are they going to say that David was naked? Like, is this where David gets?" And naked? you never found it? it, and I never found it. I was like, "Oh, well, it must be another time that he got crazy." And yeah, got naked maybe before. we'll find it, but I don't know. But, but when not I just right now, it, does David dance naked? Like nothing showed up. It was literally like the yeah. common misconceptions of the verses that we're reading <laughs> currently <laughs> said David was naked, but he wasn't. <laughs> My boy was just in a linen robe, like a priest. Ha- happy, joyful. Minding his business. Yes. And he told, this is the thing about Michael, which it made me chuckle, actually. Because he told her, where was it at that he speaks to her? Oh, I hope I can find it quickly. Because when I tell you I chuckled. Cause she was telling him like you looking real crazy out here, and she and he was like, "Now nah, you looking crazy because I'm out here praising God. I'm basically doing you up there looking bitter. You look crazy. <laughs> Dang, it must be in Samuel. Cause Chronicles they just giving me a whole do Second Samuel stuff. six. Yeah, I think it's this one because he oh this what he says oh this what she says. When David, okay, I'm just going to read it. When David returned home to bless his household, Saul's daughter, Michael, came out to meet him. How the king of Israel honored himself today, she said. He exposed himself today in the sight of the slave girls of his subjects like a vulgar person would expose himself. Maybe that's why people think he was naked because it says a vulgar person would expose himself. Because what's vulgar about being dressed like a priest? And then David replied to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me over your father and his whole family to appoint me ruler over the Lord's people, Israel. 
I will dance before the Lord and I will on- dishonor myself and humble myself even more. However, by the slave girls you spoke about, I will be honored. And Saul's daughter, Michael, had no child <laughs> to the day of her death. <laughs> I read that. I swear, I laughed. I, Bro, I, I, I was like cackling it. because in the ESV, I heard it. Okay, I should never been watching TikTok before I started reading this because <laughs> in the ESV, like if I could just, I'm probably gonna, I might do like a reenactment of this because it's so funny. But um, she's like, "How the king of Israel honored himself today, uncovered himself today before the eyes of his servant, female servants." As one of the vulgar fellows shamelessly uncovers himself, and David says to Michael, It was before the Lord <laughs> who chose me above your father and above all his house to appoint me as prince over Israel, the people of the Lord, and I will celebrate before the Lord. <laughs> I, okay. I will. <laughs> I will make myself even more contemptible than this, and I will be abased in your eyes. Like, you think this is bad? Man, I can be worse. Yes, like or, I can get or, even more undignified than what you just saw. What's that? Uh, that, that other TikTok work. sound where it's like you thought you ate. You Give me that. You ate. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he told her. Essentially, <laughs> like, like then, oh, you don't like me? Copy that. <laughs> yes, yes. It's funny because it's like to me. I mean, we don't know what happened to her after this, but like, not to mention, copy that. You never, you never hear about her again. Like she had like a little. She's irrelevant after that. And he's like, like, like in Chronicles, I don't even think they recount this conversation. The guy who wrote Chronicles is like, who cares? I got other stuff to worry about. I'm going to write about how we re-implemented these Levites. In, it in said Canada. that Michael was, uh, was mad, but like it didn't talk, it didn't do the, the, like him talking to her though. Yeah. It it doesn't, said, it like, have that part. Would, like was getting to the house. She could see him from the window. Yeah. It just said like she despised she him. Mad. That's it. It's like it does. It's like we ain't got time to talk about you, girl. We we. I'm surprised they put that other part in there. That was funny. First mm-hmm. of all, it was for the Lord. <laughs> yeah, I saw when I read it. I said, huh. I said that's <laughs> funny. I Ooh. said, woo, he read her, honey. Oh, he sure Shut did. That down. <laughs> he sure did. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> when they finally do get the ark to Jerusalem, they're still like having a good time. Um, David, he like re-implements like basically the stuff from Moses, like the Levites, y'all back, you, you and you, you over the worship, you and you, you over this. Like he re put everything back together. And that is why like his kingdom like worked so long because he just gave the whole thing to God. Like in his opinion, God was in charge, not Mm -hmm. him. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. And that's he why was David there. was actually a good king. Yeah, he was just there. Mm-hmm. He was like, praise the Lord. what he tells me to do. Right. And mind my business. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I'm just gonna, you know, for as, as much as he could in his human right. nature. But for the most part, David was a good king because he just wanted to be with God and he wanted God to be there and he wanted God to lead and he just was so in awe of God that he was just like, I've seen me try to do it and I've seen him do it. I go with him. I go with, I've I seen go with his what book. I needed to see. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I want to make, I need to get off of TikTok. It's really, <laughs> it's so fun. Oh my gosh. Like I have, I have, like I talk in TikToks. I need to get off. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. There's a TikTok where it has like all the trending sounds right now. And it's like somebody's yeah. mind going. I'm like, literally, that mm-hmm. is me. But if I hear the songs, so any fun. of the songs, I'll just start doing the dances. And my husband's yeah. just like, Yeah. Uh, Especially like right now around the holidays where you don't have too much to do. It's like, why would I make like three or four TikToks in a day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I have a reason to. Make to. Sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, so then I guess the Lord's covenant with David, because I mean, what would be oh, after yeah. that? I think after that is really, really. I must say, I didn't have that many um, notes on on God's covenant with David because I feel like it was pretty self-explanatory. But it's basically um, 
you know, God's promising David, like, your, you know, your kingdom's about to be really legit. And, you know, I'm going to keep keep you guys because, you know, but he's like, hey, you're not going to build um, the temple. You know, it's not going to be. Yeah. Yet. I hate to so, tell you. okay. So basically, like, homeboy Nathan, who's mm-hmm. a priest, right? He's, he's a, a prophet. Priest, prophet prophet Mm -hmm. other p word Mm -hmm. um david was chilling with nathan and he was like um you know god should have his own house like he should have Mm -hmm. a place like we should build him a place like yeah we need to get dad a house you know yeah and and nathan was like you know what do go for what you know because god's with you Mm -hmm. and david was like bet and then that night God was like, hey, yo, Nathan, actually don't do that because, <laughs> um, like, go back and tell him, like, I'm good because, like, when have I ever asked for that? Like, yes. I'm chilling, going I from tent that. to tent, dwelling to dwelling, like, yes. I'm good. I ain't never yeah. asked for that. Um, and matter yeah, of fact, remember, tell David, him, remember, da- <clears throat> remember David was like, he was looking at his own place and he was like, how can I live in a palace and God lives in a tent? Which I feel like that was an honorable thought. Like it was. God, like God said, God's like, I didn't ask you though, but I feel like that was a nice thought. Be like, how can I live? Like I'm nothing compared to God. I'm living in a palace and God is out there in the in tent. tent. Like, no, that's not how life works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and God was like, I'm I'm good, bro. Thanks. But like um the the real temple that's going to be built is not going to be built by you and um it's going to be built by your descendant. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jesus. Um and I will like continue the like his kingdom forever, right? Mm-hmm. So like cool thought a little early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before your time, but good thought. Yeah, I like the thoughts, but you're not going to be the one to actually put it into fruition. Now, this I, I I guess I call it like a um a prophecy or whatever like he's telling him like what's going to happen. Mhm. It is kind of crazy cuz it's like for sure he's talking about Jesus, especially when you talk about he is the one who will build a house for me and I will establish it. Like when you talk about the forever word, like his mm-hmm. throne forever is like clearly you gotta and be I will Jesus. Be because to him a father and he will be to me a son. Yeah, yeah. Like it has to be, right? But technically in real life, but that temple was destroyed. But the first temple that they thought that they were talking about was built by one of his descendants is just not the kingdom that will be forever. Right, yeah. So right. it's like I want to think about it being Solomon, yeah. but it's like Solomon's temple was destroyed. It sure was. To have to be rebuilt in Ezra and Nehemiah. So it's like mm-hmm. if if that was the descendant that was being talked about, then like that wouldn't it wouldn't have been destroyed. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> yeah. And so I'm like, well, the only one that the only kingdom that cannot be destroyed is the kingdom of God mm-hmm. via Jesus, like in Revelation, whose reign shall be no end, right? Um, yes. Did I say in Genesis? I said in Revelation. Which one did I say? Did I say in Revelation? Did I say Genesis? <laughs> I don't know. Say the right <laughs> one now, whatever what it is. In Revelation. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find what this commentary might say about that, you know, he will be my son. Cause that part, I mean, goodness gracious, that part's hard to, to miss. Um, Um, In second Samuel, this is the part that kind of like threw me for a loop. Um, Here, I think it is. I'm reading the, um, huh? hmm? Oh, I'm reading the ESV. It's Second Samuel chapter seven. 
Mm-hmm. When okay. your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you. You shall who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. When he commits iniquity, I will discipline him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the sons of men. But my steadfast love will not depart from him. As I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you in your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. <clears throat> that part where it talks about um, when he commits iniquity. Mm-hmm. I will discipline him with the rod of men and uh, with the stripes of the sons of men. Part of me is like it still points to Jesus because when sin was laid upon him or rather when he became sin so mm-hmm. when he who knew no sin became sin so that we might be made the righteousness of god in him mm-hmm. that verse and i think romans or galatians something like that in the new testament um when he became our sin he did receive the judgment of that sin it's true so yeah. i don't know if commits is a miss definition or like a mistranslation in the ESV that might be a we should pull out the the concordance but it's all the way in the other room Mm -hmm. I don't know I'm trying I'm I'm actually reading the um the commentary on first chronicle 17 which is like the same story but more you know more details Mm -hmm. and and I, I think it's I think it's 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 both. Is it is it a both and or is that the maybe? Same thing? Um, because in the commentary it does talk about Solomon, mm-hmm. but it's like almost like you know how you have like like two fulfillments of something. Yeah, like you have like it's hard to explain, but it's like Solomon fulfilled it kind of, but then like the ultimate fulfillment is Jesus. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I think so too. Because he is still in the in David's line. Of course, is like he is a descendant of David. He didn't mm-hmm. build a physical house, but his the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is his forever. Yeah, and he's on the throne, so. It has to, it has to be both. They do mention Jesus. Let me see what this says. Let me see. Yet God's promise to David was all the more important because of when the chronicler wrote about it after the exile, when there was no independent kingdom of Israel and the throne of David seemed vacant. The chronicler had the faith to see that this promise was not broken, even when it plainly seemed to be. He knew that Messiah would indeed come from the seemingly dead line of David and reign forever. He had faith in what the prophets foretold as a greater fulfillment of these promises. So that's deep. Cause when, yeah. when, when they wrote this, they were like, it doesn't even seem like there's going to be a throne forever. There's no throne. There's no, right. Yeah. So that's pretty, I like that. Yeah. Puts it into perspective. Like, I wrote this way, I wrote this after I've been in exile and, <laughs> uh, you know, cause they, they could have took that part out, you know, like when he's, when whoever's retelling this story to the exiles, they could be like, well, we're just going to take this part out because that prophecy clearly didn't happen. Cause look at us right now, everything's, mm, you know, mm-hmm. super destroyed, but no, I'm gonna put it in there because it's, we we are going to be redeemed somehow. Don't worry. Yeah, mm. that's cool. It is. I like that. I'm glad I read that. Found that little nugget there. Yeah, that was good. Yes. Uh, what else? You know, I said we didn't have much because, like I said, it was a lot of psalms. I do have a few psalms that just reminded me that it's not about me; it's about God. And I love that lesson. I you got to keep it top of mind. So in Psalms 23, which is like a great psalm, everybody loves that one. It's the good shepherd where it's like, you know, mm-hmm. 
he puts me by the water and, you know, what mm-hmm. is it? Like I lay down in green pastures. Mm-hmm. That one. But the part that stays out to me is he renews my life. He leads me along the right path for his namesake. That his namesake always, you know, is like, it's not about, he's not, he's not leading you, you know, to the right thing so you can be, it is so you can be all right, but it's for his glorification. Yeah. At the end of the day. It's not just so you can be all right and right, not tell yeah. nobody about God. It's not, no, it's not for your sake. It's really for his sake, which is like a really, like a mind twister, but it's it's so true. Um, And then another one in Psalm 25, which is um, dependence on the Lord. Another one by David. Um, What did I write down? Oh, this one. It's about basically like your sins being covered and forgiven. Mm -hmm. And David is asking, do not remember the sins of my youth or my acts of rebellion in keeping with your faithful love. Remember me because of your goodness. Again, not me. Remember me because of your goodness, Lord. The Lord is good and upright. Therefore, he shows sinners the way. Mm, So beautiful, David. Mm -hmm. That is um, Psalms 25, 7 through 8. And then Psalms 25, 11 is, Lord, for the sake of your name. Again, not about me. Lord, because of you, help me. But Lord, for the sake of your name, forgive my iniquity, for it is immense. Mm. Mm. I'm going to have to post that. I'm going to have to post that. Yeah, because, yeah post that. Oh, it's because good. It hit me so much because it's like, bro, my iniquity is immense. I am like, oh, I am a jacked up human being. Man, it's like, uh, it's really, you know, it really can be hard as a Christian, especially when you're really trying to be right. You're trying to do everything right, but then you know you can't do everything right. You're like Mm -hmm. trying to balance yourself between that grace and that, oh, you're like, but you, you know, it's like, so when I read that, Yes, Lord, forgive my iniquity because I I cannot seem to get it right all the time, even though I really want to. Yeah. Yeesh. I love that. I think I'm going to post that tomorrow or tonight. I, I, I'm just going to post it because, Lord, yes. I might have to put that on a T-shirt on a wall, on the wall in here or something. Do it. Yeah. And my notes is like, again, it's about God, not me. And... um. I wrote, David was crying out for forgiveness of his sins. You know, he knows he can't measure up t- to the holiness of God. Like, that we're, we're literally treacherous. And um, David expected pardon for God's sake, not his own. He humbly recognized the greatness of his iniquity. And I do, too. Poof. My yeah. Lord. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Is that all we have? That might be one of our shortest episodes. It is. I liked it. I liked yeah. it, though. I felt like we had things to say. Uh, I liked it, too, babe. Yeah. Next week, I don't know what we're going into. Let me see. Should I give y'all a preview, a sneak peek? Super Chef, my favorite. Are we finally getting to him? Yeah. He, it, came, it was today's. Oh, I didn't read today yet. Samuel like eight nine today. and Chronicles eighteen. So we're gonna we're still in, you know what? This is the thing we're gonna be in Psalms for a long time. Yeah because there's a lot of Psalms. A lot of chapters. So yeah. Psalms, it's like how many Psalms is there all together? It's a lot of them. I'm about to it's look like a hundred and let me see. It's a lot. So we will literally be giving you random Psalms for a little while because there are a hundred and fifty Psalms. We've read it quite a bit, but I don't think we've done 150 yet. So we'll be, we we'll not. be. But Psalms are good. They lift you up, I think. They're really nice. They really teach you about who God is, I think. So, yeah. Do you have anything to add? Nope. <laughs> no, this is great. This I thought it was good. That's all I had. I thought it was good. I mean, it's no point in just babbling about nothing. Because exactly. we said what we had to say. Yeah. I saw what I needed to see. 
<laughs> Tell you right now. Okay, well, um, well, thank you guys. Uh, I hope you make it to the end because this was shorter, so you should yeah. make it to the end for mm-hmm. those of my, uh, you know, my people that uh have shorter attention spans. Speaking of shorter attention spans, I have been uploading shorter clips of from the episodes to YouTube and Instagram. So check them out. You know, they're different links. They're just things we talk about that I think, you know, some people, they don't want to sit through everything. I understand. I understand. So I'm giving you, I'm giving the people what they want. Okay. Give them what they want, Wigs. Give, yes. give them what they want. So like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. Tell a friend, tell a friend, share it out. Share it on your Instagram. Mm-hmm. Share it on your Twitter, yep. your Facebook. Yep. Um, it's the holiday season, so you know some of y'all are on vacation. You know, you ain't doing nothing, just, right? On that long pop, drive to wherever you're going, yeah, just, just pop it on, pop put the, the AirPods on. in, whatever you gotta do. Yeah, um, but on Jesus, yes, yes, because I feel like we're come on, we're getting our groove here, and yeah, we need this. The end cool. of the year, yes, yes. The Bible content's not stopping. We're still bringing it. Uh, <clears throat> Not sure. Will we be here? Ne- <laughs> are we? Are we recording next week? Next week is New Year's. Yeah. Are you gonna be in town? Yeah. Okay. Well, here. we will see you guys next week again. And um, on that note, we're gonna peace out. Bye. Bye.